This morning in our worship service, we are going to be celebrating diversity. We're going to be talking about affirming congregations, and we're going to do that in a number of different ways. But first, I'm going to tell you a little story. About 10 years ago, I had to make a decision. I had to make a choice that would change the entire rest of my life. Now, I didn't make that decision alone. I made that decision with a large group of people, and it took me a long time to make the choice that I made. It took me about a year and a half from the time that I knew I had to make a decision and when I actually started acting based on that decision. I was meeting with a counselor, I had a spiritual director, I had my home congregation, my home minister praying and working with me. I had a whole community of students and professors that I was working with, and I also had a congregation that I was worshiping with that at, at that time because there was a large group of gay and lesbian people at that congregation there to affirm me, and they had an openly gay minister that I was able to work with. I had a choice, one of three that I could make. I could stay in the closet and just continue behaving like everything was normal and that nothing was different about me. I could choose to come out to myself and remain in the closet to everybody else and just pretend outside that things were normal but inside knowing that things were different. Or I could simply come out and let people know that this is who I was and this was a part of my life. When I made that final decision, it meant that something was taken away from me. Something that I didn't know I had until it got taken away. That something that got taken away was privilege. As a well-educated white man, I was once able to walk into any congregation, and you know how we respond to well-educated white men in our congregations? We love them. There's so few. <laughs> but when I came out of the closet, it then from that day on, I would always, always, always have to ask myself, is my sexual orientation going to be an issue? Is it going to be an issue whenever I walk into a new congregation where I haven't worshipped before? Is it going to be an issue every time I look for work? Is it going to be an issue when I go looking for a place to live? Is the new landlord or the neighbors going to have an issue? Every time a couple comes in to get married, every time a family comes in for a funeral, Every time somebody new shows up at our door for worship, I have to ask myself, is this going to be an issue for them? Every time I travel, every time I travel inside the country, and certainly every time I travel outside the country, I have to ask myself, is this going to be an issue? I'm not sure that people who have never experienced that kind of discrimination can fully understand what it's like to always have to ask yourself, is something going to be an issue? Whether it's the color of your skin, whether it's an ability that you don't have that other people have, whether it's the accent that you speak with, or any number of other things that other people are going to have an issue with. I also don't know if people who have never experienced discrimination can understand what relief and gratitude we can experience when that issue isn't an issue anymore. I don't know if I can express how grateful I am when I see a rainbow on a shop door or on somebody's car window or a rainbow windsock flying on somebody's lawn because that means that's one place that I don't have to ask that question. Every time a congregation or a community in the United Church says that they're going to be an affirming congregation, that means that's one less place that I need to ask the question, is this going to be an issue? We're going to engage that conversation a little bit more in several stations throughout the church. If you want to stay here in the sanctuary, there will be three people telling their stories of affirmation and celebrating difference 
right here in the sanctuary. So we'll go three stories here. If you would like to sing some music, there will be music sung in the chapel. If you would like some quiet, reflective time, we've set up a library for some quiet, reflective space where you can go and read some material or sit in quiet prayer. Downstairs in the Sunday school rooms, there's a video being played, and you're going to have some conversation and do some activities downstairs. Way upstairs, at the very, very top of the stairs, at the club room, there is going to be a children's story and a craft happening way up there, if you'd like to go up there. And there will be a conversation in the lounge about our mission statement and how it is or isn't affirming. So if you'd like to participate in that conversation, that's happening in the lounge. Only the session happening in the lounge is, is for the full 30 minutes that we have left. Everything else, please feel free to stay for 10 minutes and move on to another station to experience what that other station has to offer. We're going to start moving to our stations in just a minute. Each of you is given a fish. Hold up your fish so I can see your fish. As you go to your stations, think about those sentences on your fish and please complete them because we're going to do something with those in the latter part of our service. People who are leaving groups, we need to come back here right at 11.15. So let's begin. Get here the groups that you want to start in, and we'll start. 